Hey everyone, welcome back to a better biomed and a phobie video because this is this is a video that's probably gonna get shared on both platforms. And that's because the story happened and it's one of those crazy situations. And I want to uh, talk about one of my coworkers who is absolutely amazing. His name is Fernando. And Fernando is uh, probably one of the hardest working people that I've ever seen, hands down. He's one of those people where you tell him what you want and he just goes and does it. It's, it's that amazing. So the story goes like this. Fernando, he's an expert on compressed gas systems and on oxygen blender systems in general. And we got this call one afternoon here at Phoebe and the customers stated that they got, they have an emergency because they weren't able to get down to 21% oxygen on their blenders in the pediatric ward. So you guys are probably are automatically thinking, holy cow. Uh, Cause if you know, uh, pediatrics, they require you to mix down the oxygen because babies can and might go blind if they're fed pure oxygen. So it is an emergent situation and you always want to be able to control your oxygen percentage because if somebody is being fed close to pure oxygen, their body tends to get lazy, which is why you have an oxygen blender in the first place because you can start them at a high oxygen content while they're recuperating and then you turn it down so that they get closer to atmospheric, which is 21%. So guys, uh, since they had this emergency and they're starting to think that our blender rebuild, which just happened two months prior, they thought that the blenders were reverse feeding oxygen into the med air system. So since it's an emergency, uh, Fernando and I, we scheduled to head out at seven o'clock the next morning. So we drove up here, we met up here in the Phoebe parking lot, and then we uh, hopped in a car and we headed towards San Antonio first thing in the morning. And uh, we had a full tool set. We had complete blender rebuild kits because we really wanted to get to the root of this problem because obviously it's an emergency, right? Anytime that you have oxygen bleeding over into med air, it's not good. So on the way, Fernando and I, we stopped at a single Bucky's um, and we just grabbed breakfast. And I told him because we never know when we're going to be able to eat next. It's it's just one of those situations, you know, if, if you are into the med air plumbing, you might not be able to get to eat because if you shut down a wing or a section of the hospital for med air, it's, it's going to have some consequences. So Fernando, no qualms whatsoever. He uh, went inside, we both grabbed a, you know, a little something for breakfast. And uh, then we got to the site out there in San Antonio at about 10 to 10, 15 in the morning. So it's a three hour drive. So anyway, uh, we were in there, we found the problem, and it was not the blenders, but it was actually um, blenders that were located inside resuscitators that had not been rebuilt um, in quite a long time, if ever. So um, that's why, Phoebe, we developed a whole new process for rebuilding those resuscitators so that people don't have to inconvenience themselves. So we developed a whole process, a whole separate training because of this incident right here. But the moral of the story is that Fernando and I were on site from 10 o'clock in the morning. We ended up walking out of the facility at 8.15 p.m. No lunch, no breaks, no nothing, just straight up work, investigation, documentation, and solving the problem, which ended up being a whole separate medical device that we had yet to touch. But since we identified the problem, we immediately got to rebuilding all these devices, even before we had a PO for any of this because it's such an emergency that uh, we got to go ahead and before any PO was issued, we started uh, as a team rebuilding, you know, their entire fleet of uh, embedded resuscitators that are in the Panda warmers. So anyway, 8.15 rolls around. I look over at Fernando and I'm like, hey man, I can't tell you how much I appreciate you just sticking it out and, and solving this problem with me because we barely got the problem solved by 8.15 p.m. If we would have took an hour for lunch or anything, we wouldn't have got it done in one day. And that led to more time that these infants were being saturated with oxygen. It's just one of those things. So he understood the objective and the mission and he just stuck to it. And I'm one of those kind of guys, I will work completely through lunch, but to find a fellow coworker who understands the mission and knows the, the dire circumstances that we're under, he just did it, man. 
So I treated him out to a nice dinner with lobster and steak. And uh, we, we ended up celebrating like kings that night because we got the problem solved. But he didn't complain a single time. And I'll tell you what. It's on, on my bag that I carry around. It's got a little patch on it that says embrace the suck. And any of you guys that are from the military, you know exactly what that comes from. What it means is that we're in this together and, you know, we're going to we're going to solve this problem together. You know, we're enduring this hardship together as a team. And that's what that's what it means. And uh, Fernando exemplified that. And what an amazing person to work with. So. Fernando, uh, I wanted him to be here with me to do this video, but unfortunately, the man is always deployed. He's always uh, dedicated to his job, and finding time where both of us are in the same spot is almost impossible. So, Fernando, thank you so much, sir, for your for your due diligence and your service. And guys, I just want to uh, remind you that some of the best biomeds out there weren't even biomeds. Think about it. I mean... There's some people that work in other technical career fields that do some amazing work, like Fernando, and I appreciate having them on my team. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Thank you, Fernando. I appreciate your work, man.